everybody. It's Jeff Antoniak. Welcome to Guided Listening this week. So this is the first week back. I just had a very nice vacation last week, went to England and had a wonderful time there touring around, met with some great musicians, and it was just very, very fun. Right before that, we did both the online and the in-person Jazzwire Summer Summit. I want to report it was incredible. We had about 75 participants from around the world, both online, of course, but in person. We had people from all across North America. We had people from South America. We had people from Europe attending in person. It was astounding. We had 13 different faculty members. We produced, gosh, uh, five or six concerts through the thing. It, it was just incredible. It was rewarding. I really want you to uh, pencil in, I don't remember the dates, for July of 2024. It's the last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four days um, for the in-person session. Uh, I'll, be, I'll let you know about those dates as they come up, but uh, we sold out uh, very quickly. Uh, we're going to be developing some new workshops in different parts of the country. We're looking at Europe again. So uh, there's going to be more coming, but uh, just, you know, the report that we had uh, really almost 100 people all included, uh, faculty, staff, and participants, and it was just uh, very rewarding and a blast. We've got some very happy people working together now inside Jazzwire. Please grab the free tour. If you haven't looked inside Jazzwire, what you waiting for? Check out what we're doing there. I'd love to work with you inside Jazzwire. So today, we're going to do a song by Tim Hagens. Do you guys know who Tim Hagens is? You really need to know who Tim Hagens is. Tim Hagens on the trumpet, Bob Belden on the saxophone. Amazing composer, arranger, um, orchestrator, record producer. Bob Belden unfortunately passed away a little while ago. Um, Larry Grenadier on the bass and Billy Kilson on drums. Two horns, bass drums, no harmony instrument. Uh, this is called Family Flowers. So the story is, this was recorded like a couple months before I started studying with Tim Hagens. Um, I'm a Canadian citizen, now also an American citizen. I'm a super spy because uh, I have like just a stack of passports. I admire your luck, Mr. Fantoniak. Jeff Antoniak. Too high, fair enough. At the time, Canadian got a grant from the Canada Council, uh, you know, a good chunk of money to study with whoever I wanted anywhere on earth. And so I was really thinking about Joe Lovano. I was so excited about Joe Lovano's playing in the early mid 90s, as I still am to this day. All these Joe Lovano albums, I'm hearing this trumpet player, and I don't know what the hell he's doing, and it's awesome. But I can't explain it. Like, I don't. And so the more I listened, it's like I noticed, like, I'm, I'm kind of waiting for the trumpet solo. So after a while, it's like, well, why don't I just study with this guy? Of course, I wasn't studying trumpet, but improvisation, like what is Tim Hagen's doing? So for two or three years, I studied with him and uh, we spent a lot of time together and the information he gave me absolutely changed my thinking, my teaching, and my playing. So the things that I get into inside Jazzwire are very informed by a lot of the work that I did with Tim. To keep it very short, Tim loves freedom. Um, now, Tim, if you're uh, if you're uh, watching here, I hope I get this stuff right. Uh, Tim uh, Tim can play the hell of the chord changes. I mean, oh my God, can he play the changes? But he loves, let's call it being the fly in the ointment. Sometimes he likes surprise, right? So so he's not someone that's going to play the perfect bebop solo. Not because he can't, but because that that's not his artistic vision. Uh, last week I was in London and I went to the Tate and I saw paintings by my one of my favorite painters, uh, period, uh, Francis Bacon, the 1900s Francis Bacon, not the older guy. And, um, and it was fascinating to see, uh, it, it was cool to see some of those paintings. I've seen his work in other places, but how he takes reality and twists it and twists it in a way not just to screw with you and to say, hey, I've got technique, I know how to twist things, but to get deeper things out of it. So, so that, those are a lot of words, but it, it was sort of resonating with Tim's playing and my work with Tim. So we're gonna hear a song here that's very much over a vamp. Like there, it's, it's really kind of one tonality. It goes into some chord changes. It's a happy, peppy little tune, but we're gonna hear a lot. A, a lot of what you're hearing is free playing in the sense that, Tim's not necessarily thinking about, oh, Coltrane change is here and I'm going to superimpose this there and now I'm going to do such and such. He's developed his melodic uh, sense and intuition 
to uh, this incredible level. So there's all sorts of fun stuff in this recording, and, uh, and I can't believe it took this long for me to do some uh, Tim Hagen's. This is off an album called Audible Architecture, and as I said, he recorded this right before I started studying with him, and the album came out you know, X number of months after, so we really talked about this album a lot because I was living with this album uh, nonstop for you know, a year or two. Here we go, Family Flowers. So there's our tempo. So what's this feel? What's this gonna be? Cool, so sort of a calypso. Beautiful melodic composition. Second A section, I guess. And we're hearing bass, drums, unison horns. Not much, right? Okay, this is different, but it's it's still the composition it sounds like. Right? Okay, another bridge, I guess. So, so far we've had A, A, B, B. A little call and response in the tenor and the trumpet. Ah, last A section. And so I'm wondering, are they going to stay with that form, A, A, B, B, A, in the solos? Let's hear it. Cool. So listen to the bass. Repetitive rhythm. And he's just hanging out there. There's no chord changes, just a key. So Tim takes it out, brings it back. Little hint of the melody. Pretty tonal, right? Nice and inside. Okay. Brings it inside. You really get this cool suspended feel, right? The emotion of like, what's, what's gonna happen? Okay. Still that one tonality in the bass. Is he being interactive? No, he's keeping it home. But the drums and Tim are mixing it up, right? Woo! Melody there again. So he's bringing it back a little bit. Oh, cool. So the melody under his solo. Bass, of course, has gone on to these chord changes here. Cool. Tenor solo, but now we're kind of moving ahead. Ooh, what are, is that the third time he played that? Boo boo down. Fourth time. Fifth time? How dare he? Eight times the same idea. A different idea. Let's know this repetition and how freaking good it feels. Man, Bob Belden, good lord. Re repetition. Four. Five. Blues. 
three things right there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Listen to all that repetition. Oh my God. And again. Wow. Motivic playing. And the bass is a little busier. Did you hear Billy Kilson? Shift to the cymbal there. Amping it up behind Belvin. Cells that he's using so much of. Right? Little moments. You hear, you hear the, all that repetition in there? Energy just keeps building, right? <laughs> Again, that repetition of simple ideas. Dixieland. Man, think of that energy, bass and drums, and a horn. Unbelievable. Melody, left it again. So how Hagen's and Belden, tenor and trumpet, they're listening to each other, they're talking over each other, they're responding, they're disagreeing, they're agreeing. One's being safer, one's being more energetic, and a board fade, right? Clearly this isn't the musicians just playing quieter. It's a board fade, right? They're playing louder, louder, louder as they go on, and then finally uh, the thing fades out. Wow. Um, man, I'm going to listen to that uh, a bunch. There's, there's so much interesting stuff in there that I want to sort of find out what was going on. But again, I have an insight into how Tim thinks and plays, or at least in that era of his playing. He knows so much about harmony. He was hired, to, he took over Thad Jones's spot um, over in Europe with, oh gosh, I don't want to get it uh, wrong. Yeah, I may get it wrong. Um, 
Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, so he's associated with some of the biggest, most important European big bands as an artistic director, as composer, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So nobody knows anything, you know, any more about harmony and melody than Tim Hagen's. But he had, but he really loved that free approach. And that's a lot of what we did together was free playing, frankly, and developing momentum in our playing. Well, there was plenty of momentum there, as in a freight train bearing down on you, and uh, it's coming, right? So uh, what you were hearing in there, it, Bob Belden's playing was fascinating because um, it was rare, uh, I guess might be the word, where he, where he would play something that wasn't necess- that he didn't develop, right? So when I hear Belden's playing, I definitely hear uh, Wayne Shorter and I hear Joe Henderson and you know some of the great people that that he obviously loved and emulated and listened to. But man, he sounds like himself. But those little ideas, a two note idea, and he would just build an incredible thing out of two notes. And he did that so many times. Sometimes three notes, sometimes four notes. But these short ideas. What what a cool approach and how his solo built. Go back and listen to the beginning of his solo and then to where it ended. Amazing. Wow. What a what a great recording. And it's called Family Flowers. So uh, as I recall, Tim had, I want to say, three daughters, and I think they were all named after flowers, Iris and so on. Um, so, uh, you know, I like to think, I don't, I, I don't know if he told me the story, but, you know, as I hear the end of that song, you know, being there with your wife and like three young girls, things probably got a little noisy at times. There was probably some talking over each other. So, um, so uh, it was also very pleasant and beautiful, right? So uh, <laughs> I love how that tune ends. And, uh, you know, probably, you know, like most family dinners of that era, probably a lot of excitement and exuberance and talking over each other. So uh, I hope you enjoy that. If you're not hip to Tim Hagens, both he and Belden played in the Woody Herman Band back in the day. Before that, uh, Tim was in uh, the Stan Kenton Band, so did all this big band stuff, which sort of kept coming back through his career. Uh, nominated for three Grammys, I want to say. Belden uh, won uh, at least one Grammy and nominated for many, many more. These are names we should know. Bob Belden, Tim Hagens. And, you know, one of the most important bass sidemen in the world uh, on so many recordings. And, of course, his own music, Larry Grenadier, and then Billy Kilson on drums, who has played with endless, endless plenty of people as well. So a cool recording. It's very neat because the entire album, it, it's mostly trio, trumpet, bass, drums. So there's no harmony instrument anywhere on this album. And the biggest the band gets is what you just heard there, two horns, bass, and drums. Um, there are duos on the album, bass and trumpet. There is solo trumpet. The album ends with solo trumpet, Tim just playing free as he loved to do. So um, <clears throat> interesting to think about how organized and how much structure and how, you know, how there was true call and response, or, or I'm sorry, tension and release in all those solos in Hagen's playing, but... Um, but, you know, was he using 5-1? Was he using a tritone substitute? Was he using the altered scale? I don't know that he was thinking about that. That's all in there. He knows that stuff. That's all in his ears and under his fingers. But uh, he's operating at a different level, um, Tim Haggins. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, happy that I got to share that with you. And uh, Tim, if you're listening, I hope I got a bit of that right anyway. But man, what a fantastic song. And uh, all I'm thinking right now is how I need to be doing that song with my band. So I'm going to be transcribing it soon. All right, everybody, take care. Hope I'll see you inside Jazzwire coming up. And uh, I'll see you next week. Have a great time.